So Lima Fusion 4.0, it is in the horizon. I can see it far over there and it's gonna come in hot. This is one of the most intuitive upgrades to Luma Fusion to this date. The way that this multicam feature is working is insane. It's so satisfying and you just want to sit there and tap the different images and, you know, change the different angles. And it's going to be the perfect tool for those of you having multiple cameras, like if you're editing a review video and you have multiple cameras set up, like an overhead shot and also a, a talking head shot. And Maybe you have a side camera or any other cameras and everything is recording simultaneously. You have, you're going to have the best experience ever. Let me show you an example of how this works. So to start a multicam project, we first have to go over to the add selection button. Here you'll see a new option called multicam container. Selecting this, a new multicam layer will automatically be added to your timeline. And here you can find two options, a synchronizer and a switcher. In the synchronizer, you'll be doing most of the heavy editing, like importing media, trimming, color grading, and more. And the switcher is the final step before exporting your video. But before we export, we also need to make a multicam sequence. Selecting the option Synchronizer, we now have a new layout with media drop zones and a dedicated drop zone for audio. This is going to be your master audio. So if you have a master audio file, you will be dropping this right here. And now selecting our media folder, we can drag each clip down to a drop zone. And if you happen to have two clips from the same recording, like a GoPro or Action 3, which usually splits the clip in half after recording for a certain time, you can also stack these in the same drop zone. After importing the clip, we can synchronize the footage by selecting Sync Method. Here we have four options, Automatic, Audio, Timecode and None. By selecting none, you can manually synchronize the clips by dragging them on the timeline and then take a peek at each waveform to easily synchronize manually. Now for this, I'm going to select audio. And once the synchronizing is done, you should see that your audio is now matching on the different clips. Now here we have the DJI Mini 3 Pro, which is definitely my favorite drone. Now for this example, I will just take out a part from the middle. Now, since I don't have a consistent audio running throughout my sequence, I would need to do some trimming to make the video and the audio sound and look better. So to make a cut, you just tap once with two fingers on the clip you want to trim. Then select the part you don't want and then tap hold and drag it out of the screen to delete it or you can select it and tap the trash can. Now, after trimming down a section of the video, you can see that I have some gaps between my cuts. To remove these, we can either go back to the timeline and then cut away the parts, which are empty, as you can see here in this example. But this also creates a new multicam section on our timeline, which might add some difficulties when using the switcher. Phone has to be registered. Now, this has a total flight time of so by going back to the synchronizer, since everything is now synced and trimmed, we can actually change this to none. This will allow us to freely adjust the layers and we can now stack them in group. Now on the timeline, we can see that the gaps has been removed and we can now finish up the video using the switcher. But before we do that, we might need to add some color grading to the main camera, which is recorded in S-Log3. So inside the synchronizer, I'm going to select one of the layers and go over to the color section and add my correction. Once the correction is done, I'm going to select the clipboard and then copy and paste the color grading on the two remaining clips. Now, if you want, you can also start your edit by adding color correction and grading to your footage before you start trimming. If your sequence is long and contains multiple cuts, by adding the color grading at start, you don't have to do the unnecessary copy pasting. And now that the color grading is done, we can move over to the switcher. Here you can see that I have three thumbnails with three different clips. And the video I shot for this sequence was a typical review video, where I have a talking head clip, a overhead shot and an added side shot. The next part is actually really satisfying. The only thing you have to do now is to hit play and then tap on the clip you want to show. Now here we have the DJI Mini 3 Pro and this is my most used and also my favorite. But playing back the video here, you could also hear that the audio was switching from my main microphone to the mic from the overhead shot, which was the GoPro. And we don't want that. We want the best audio to play throughout the entire sequence. So to fix this, we need to go back to the synchronizer and map the audio. 
on each drop zone you can see a number and also a number with a speaker icon. You can either map the audio by selecting the speaker icon and then the number of the layer which has the audio you want to keep. Or you can simply mute the audio on all the layers except the one you need. Another way is to always keep your main video and audio on layer 1 and then just drag the audio slider on the remaining down to 0, whichever you prefer. So now we can go back to the switcher and the audio has automatically been adjusted. So by tapping play and going through the sequence, we can now tap on the clip we want to show in the video. Here we have the DJI Mini 3 Pro and this is my most used and also my favorite travel drone. It weighs only 249 grams and that means you don't have to register in some countries, but here in Europe or... After the adjustment, we now have a finished multicam layer on our timeline. Mini 3 Pro and this is my most used and also my favorite travel drone. It weighs only 249 grams and that means you don't have to register in some countries. But Now we can also drag this around wherever we want which makes it really convenient if you need to add an additional sequence at the beginning or end. Now this is also where you want to add your motion graphics as a final touch to your video before you export the final video. And if you don't have any motion graphics to use in LumaFusion, you can always find everything that you need in my online shop and uh, you can also get an additional discount with the code LumaFusion4 on checkout. So there you have the brand new LumaFusion 4.0 update which brings a multicam to the table. This will be an in-app purchase and the price will be $19.99 US dollars. Let me know if you have been using multicam editing before and if not, what type of videos would you see yourself editing with multicam? Let me know what you think of the new multicam feature below and will you be getting it? I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you found any value in today's video, let me know by dropping a like. Until next time, take care and I will see you in the next one.